Once thought to be mermaids by shipwrecked sailors, the West Indian manatee is also known as the sea cow. Unlike the mermaid though, the manatee has a fusiform body, meaning that it is tapered at both the head and the tail, with no obvious neck crease. Declining numbers of the West Indian manatee population caused it to be designated by the EMA as an environmentally sensitive species in 2005. So there are two subspecies of the West Indian manatee. There's the Florida manatee and the Antillean manatee. The Antillean manatee is found in Trinidad, um, in the Nerva Swamp in Trinidad's waters. In the mouth, you have what are known as marching molars, so they are continuously replaced. The nostrils uh, have two little plugs so that during diving, these plugs come and seal the respiratory passages, the nasal passages, so that the animal stays down and you know water does not enter the tract. So it's able to dive and stay, have a nice seal on the on the nostrils. The eyes are fairly small. There are no um, ears that you can visibly see, but they are there. They have two pectoral flippers. Um, the skin itself is fairly, it's on the rougher side really. It gets a little smoother as the animal gets older. It can be somewhat wrinkled, especially in the younger animal. They also have a caudal flipper and this end of the body is very strong. So when we're handling the animals, we tend to try and avoid the hind end. It's a very powerful muscles at the back, so this can actually deliver a very strong blow and that can damage an individual pretty badly. A herbivore, a full-grown adult manatee can be up to three meters long. Newborn calves range from about 80 to 160 centimeters long and they can weigh about 30 kilograms. Manatees, are, they have a gestation period of just over a year, so roughly 13 months and the mothers or the dam would stay with their calf or the calf would stay with the, with the dam for up to two years so that their reproductive cycle um, can run anywhere um, from two to three years. So that is also in a way a threat to population expansion because they have such a long um, intercalving interval. So between one calf and another, it could be anywhere from two to three years. Historically, manatees were found on the eastern and southern coastal swamps, rivers, bays and other waterways in Trinidad. The West Indian manatee was once also found in Tobago and frequented the Buko Reef Lagoon. Now, the main habitat of the West Indian manatee population is the Naripa Swamp, which itself is an environmentally sensitive area located on the east coast of Trinidad. In general, they don't congregate, so you would not find them in large groups. They tend to be more solitary. They would come together for breeding purposes, and then you'd find them roaming separately, grazing um, in shallow waters, usually about uh, six feet or so. Um, fairly shallow waters. The West Indian manatee is the largest wild mammal inhabiting the rivers and wetland areas of the east coast of Trinidad. According to the Environmental Management Act, one can be fined up to $100,000 and face imprisonment for up to two years if one commits an offence as outlined in the EM Act against an ESA or ESS. In addition to the environmentally sensitive species rules, the manatee is also protected under the Conservation of Wildlife Act. This act prohibits the hunting of the species and the possession of any part of it. The decline of the manatee population can be directly linked to poaching. This illegal activity brought the manatee to the brink of extinction locally and the mammal has since been recorded under the Red List of Threatened Species by the International Union for Conservation of Nature as a vulnerable species. A population of manatees locally is very small, if you can call it a population at all really. It's estimated to be just about 25 to 30 animals. So we are really dealing with, uh, uh, an, with animals that well, we're really dealing with a situation where we have very few animals left and that population rebound could be, uh, could be a challenge. Hunting is not the only threat the manatee faces. 
Long-term development plans have a serious impact on the hydrology and ecology of the Nerifa area. Manatees actually have no natural predators. Um, so interestingly enough, their major threats come from environmental destruction, um, habitat pollution, habitat destruction, um, with our manatees pretty much being localized to the Inner River Swamp and surrounding um, rivers and tributaries. Um, we're essentially dealing with anything that um, destroys the mangroves, um, pollutes the waters of the rivers and, and the swamp itself, dredging, chemical, pollu uh, chemical pollution, so um, runoff from agricultural um, sites that may be uh, nearby certainly would pose a threat. Conservation and management are critical to the survival of the West Indian manatee. This is being done through three major channels, protecting the manatee's habitat, monitoring the status of the species, and creating a greater public awareness of the species. In terms of the manatee's habitat, there is a need to identify the range of the animal and develop specific management protocols for that area. The manatee's habitat should be continuously monitored, coupled with improved enforcement of existing legislation. Local communities need to be trained in sustainable livelihoods and conservation efforts must be made a priority. Here at the University of the West Indies School of Veterinary Medicine, we have started um, that process. We have so far um, started looking at fecal parasitological analyses to kind of get an idea of what type of um, gastrointestinal parasites, so parasites of the digestive tract, um, what sort of parasite might be in our local population. We would like to get to a point where we could actually physically handle the manatees and get blood samples, do, do um, genetic testing. Therefore, there is a need to create sanctuaries for them and promote information sharing at both the national and regional levels. Protection of this species will undoubtedly involve a greater level of regional conservation efforts and local law enforcement. Conservation initiatives are being fueled by public education and awareness campaigns involving both state and NGO groups. Members of local communities are being trained in manatee research, and it is hoped that they too will assist in promoting manatee ecotourism. Awareness of wetland conservation is also critical to the survival of the West Indian manatee and other threatened species in Trinidad and Tobago. You have the power to report sightings of illegal practices, discourage hunting of these creatures and habitat destruction, and avoid pollution. Together, we can safeguard the life of this animal for many years to come.